Nevertheless, the importance of this exercise and the hope it represents in this opportunity to start afresh without some of the shibboleths that have shackled us in the course of our brief history as an independent nation is to be welcomed. We are taking part because of our responsibility to the women of this country to speak for them and to advance the cause for meaningful gender equality. Irrespective of whether this process heralds a new beginning or ends in more despair, we are recording these views for posterity so that history can bear witness to our hopes and dreams for women in this, as of this moment in time. And so we embark on this journey with a fragile faith and a faint trust that despite our deepest fears surrounding the Constitution Commission and the unclear intentions of those in power, a new Constitution will presage the restoration of the rule of law, democracy, free and fair elections by September 2014. Perhaps some of our most important recommendations concern the Bill of Rights. We have cited the principles of the 1997 Constitution as the basis for a more comprehensive Charter of Rights in the proposed Constitution, including the manner and mechanism of implementation. Based on precedents from Kenya and South Africa, Suggested provisions are submitted for inclusion, and particular attention is drawn to the process by which the Bill of Rights is to be applied, how it may be limited, and which fundamental rights and freedoms may not be limited under any circumstances. We have also made recommendations regarding substantive equality, a definition of discrimination to be included, and how human rights apply to specific groups. One of the proposed new areas we would like to highlight is the protection of human rights defenders. Fiji has a long history of struggle by human rights defenders, from early colonial times through to the present day. In our country, human rights defenders may be women's rights activists, journalists, lawyers, academics, unionists, or community workers who are among the groups facing specific human rights violations because of the work they do. As outlined in the Declaration on Human Rights Defenders of 1998, they are those individuals, groups, and organs of society that promote and protect universally recognized human rights and fundamental freedoms. This definition does not include those individuals or groups who commit or propagate violence. Within this group, women human rights defenders are a special category facing specific vulnerabilities, not only because of what they do, but also because of who they are. Women human rights defenders are women's rights activists, women who fight for human rights in general, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and intersex activists, and others working on women's issues, or advocacy for sexual rights. They put themselves on the front line in the promotion and protection of human rights. In doing so, they face risks that are specific to their gender and additional to those faced by men. We have a clear understanding of the risks that women human rights defenders face because FWRM, our staff and board, have been and continue to be attacked because of our human rights work. This occurred throughout our 26 year history, including since the December 5, 2006 military coup. Our executive director, Virisila Mbuandromo, and her husband were illegally detained and physically assaulted by the military on Christmas Eve 2006 in response to her public stand for democracy and the rule of law. In the years following the coup, founding board member Imran Jalal and her family faced legal attacks by the regime who used petty administrative matters to demoralize and harass the veteran activist. She now no longer resides in Fiji. <coughs> Our recommended clauses for inclusion in the Bill of Rights mention the specific vulnerabilities of human rights defenders and the obligation of the state to recognize, protect, and promote their rights. The other proposed new addition to the Bill of Rights that we would like to see is the link between human rights and the environment. Fiji feminists such as the late Amalia Rokutuibuna, the late Susan Parkinson, and the late Ruth Lekti 
worked all their lives to draw our attention to these human rights concerns. The impact of climate change and untrammeled economic development has battered the environment, and we need to ensure it is maintained and protected for present and future generations. This is a pressing issue in the light of proposed large-scale mining operations in the country, with untold consequences for the environment and for the community at large. We recommend clauses that outline our rights to a healthy and pleasant environment. All members of the community have the right to participate in the management, maintenance, preservation and use of natural <coughs> resources and the environment. To this end, the state must adopt necessary freedom of information measures, along with measures for safeguarding forests, oceans, rivers and coasts. A critical area of concern for Fiji is the shockingly low numbers of women in national decision making. This requires intervention in the form of temporary special measures such as quotas in parliament or party lists towards ensuring 50% representation of women. In certain quotas, it is argued that temporary special measures run counter to democratic principles where everyone is supposed to be competing equally. The short answer to the proposition is that there is no level playing field. Women have historically dis been disadvantaged. Women have faced and continue to experience significant cultural and social barriers to their meaningful participation in decision making. Special measures for women leadership are intended to be temporary and would be withdrawn once the objectives were met. This is in line with international best practice as recommended by the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, UNCDO. The in intention is to encourage and promote the entry of a critical mass of women to enable their perspectives to be articulated and reflected in debate and the formulation of policy at the highest levels. The persistence of male-dominated parliaments has meant the denial of the right of women to be involved in the making of laws that affect them directly. Temporary special measures should have constitutional basis to ensure they can be. It must now <coughs> also widen its membership to include professionals, women, and youth consistent with the responsibilities they are increasingly assuming. We recommend that the Bosselian Papaturala be reinstated and have the opportunity to consider its future role under an elected government. As to what this may be, there is a place for mentoring, instilling leadership skills, and developing cultural assets, such as the Toki language and retaining fast vanishing art and craft which may might be considered. These are open questions for the future. We have shared with you today not just the views of a few women working in Suva, but the results of our conversations with women and girls around Fiji. They have shared with us their worries and hopes for the future, which we have echoed in our submission today. These voices have long been ignored and often violently suppressed. This is our sincere hope that you hear us today.
So I think you can count on our support for what you, much of what you have said today. And I'm sorry we don't have uh, time to discuss further, but uh, we can certainly meet you later. We still have a few months before we finish our work. And uh, 